Welcome everybody. I am Dr. Pamela Thomas. You are um, here at online with the CMC. This morning, um, Sherry Schuler faust uh, one of our CMC catalogers, and Katie Powell, our intern, will be talking about when speech bubbles and pictures collide, cataloging graphic novels. Take it away, ladies. All right, so good morning, everyone. Um, as you heard, my name is Katie Powell, and I am co-presenting today with Sherry Schuler faust as the CMC's fall intern. It's been a great experience so far. Um, and today we will be discussing some of the characteristics and best practices of cataloging graphic novels. So specifically, we're gonna be going over the definition of graphic novels, the difference between graphic novels, comic strips and comic books, manga versus anime, and manga adaptations of light novels, single versus multi-part records, unique fixed fields, authors and adapters, cataloging best practices, free floating form subdivisions, genre terms, the mark tag 700 and its relator terms, and graphic novel examples. So graphic novels are standalone stories that are written in comic style. They're often numbered, but they don't have to be. Graphic novels can also be compilations of published comic books, original works, and or adaptations, and they can be fiction or nonfiction. They are images with text, and often that text is within a bubble. Comic strips are panels of images with text in a strip that are serialized either daily or weekly. So think Peanuts, Blondie, Beetle Bailey, for better or worse. While comic books are panels of images in serial form, often released monthly and numbered, and they usually don't have a unique title. So The Amazing Spider-Man or Archie. So manga refers to graphic novels originally published in Japan using the Japanese art form. And anime is that same Japanese art form that's animated as a moving image. Light novels are a little bit more new to the field now, um, just because they're uh, novels that are using manga art with uh, 50,000 words or less that can be adapted from manga or anime or serve as the adapted work themselves. The majority of the novel is text as opposed to illustrations. So that means they're going to not be cataloged as a graphic novel or a comic book, but rather as a book. Graphic novels can be cataloged as a monographic set or as a single record. That decision is based on what your library institution decides is the best course for their patrons and or their library online public catalog. The Illinois Heartland library system has elected to use a catalog to catalog graphic novels as a single record. You will see both monographic set records and um, single records in OCLC for the same titles as shown uh, on the slide. So the fixed field element for the nature of the contents will always have the number six when cataloging a graphic novel or a comic book. The number six, according to bibliographic formats and standards, uh, denotes that comics, that they are comics or graphic novels, which are instances of sequential art in which a story, whether fact or fiction, is told primarily through a set of images, often in the form of multiple panels per page, and are presented concurrently, but meant to be read sequentially by the viewer. The accompanying narrative and or dialogue text when it occurs works integrally with the images to tell the story. So graphic novels are often adaptations of previously written works. For example, we use Library Wars, Love and War, which is the creation of Hiro Arikawa, which, 
with uh, number three written by Kiro Yumi. And the English translation of Kiro Yumi's work is by Kiname Watabe. The adaptation of the translated version of the original writing of number three is, which was originally by Kiro Yumi, was by Sean McCoy. And so for this record, Sean McCoy would be the preferred access point in Mark Tag 100, since he adapted the work that was made by another creator who was Kiro Yumi. In the 300 tag, use the word chiefly since um, graphic novels consist mostly of illustrations. And this is because under the LCRI for AACR2 2.5C5, if the publication consisted wholly or predominantly of illustrations, the cataloger was instructed to give all illustrations or chiefly illustrations as appropriate. It's not entirely clear whether RDA allows phrasing of this kind. It appears that a note is preferable, although illustrations alone would still be recorded in the 300 with mark tag 500 as chiefly illustrations. And this was um, retrieved from web library Yale EDU. The free floating form heading comic book strips, et cetera, should be added to all subject headings, regardless as to whether the book is fiction or nonfiction, juvenile or adult. So best practice for IHLS is to include both graphic novels and comics graphic works as form headings on graphic novels. There are currently 42 possible genre terms for use in graphic novel cataloging, and these terms should be used when appropriate for the, for the item that you are cataloging. Graphic novels have some specific contributors such as artists, colorists, and letterers. They often have translators as well. As stated earlier, uh, they will also have adapters, but those are considered authors since they adapt an original work into a new work. And in cases such as these, uh, the 700 should also be included for the original creator. And now Sherry will take over presenting. Uh, hello, everybody. Sorry for the confusion on my sound. Um, we're going to look at a couple um, books and records just to see what the cataloging looks like. So this book, Forgiveness is Really Strange, is a nonfiction graphic novel written by Massey Knorr and Marina Canta Casino with art by Sophie Standing. So if you look at this record for this book, um, you'll notice that in the fixed field, we have the contents, the C-O-N-T, um, coded with the six for comics graphic works. Um, we still do the 245 the same, putting in the um, two authors. And you also want to include um, like the artist and maybe the letter or color or whoever else is has contributed greatly to this um, this book. So um, we also in our record include the chiefly color illustrations. Um, as Katie said before, this was sort of an AACR2 way of um, describing this um, and we have elected to continue that practice, but you could also just put illustrations in the subfield B with a 500 note that said chiefly illustrated. Um, as you'll notice also, we've used the free floating subdivision um, or form heading, I'm sorry, um, comic book strips, et cetera, on our subject headings. And then we've also included um, some genre form headings. Um, psychological comics um, is the is the genre heading, and then we've used the three form three form headings: nonfiction comics, graphic novels, and comics graphic works. So our next book is um, *The Magicians' New Class*. Um, *The Magicians* is a novel by Lev Grossman, and it was adapted by Lila Sturgis into a new work as a graphic novel with different parts. This graphic novel has an artist, a colorist, and a letterer that should have added personal name access. So when we look at this record, um, you see that the 245 does have um, all the people that contributed to this work. 
um, the person who wrote it, the illustrator, um, the inker, which is an illustrator, the person who did the coloring and the person who did the lettering. Um, you'll also um, notice that um, in the 700s, there's specific uh, relator terms that coordinate with these. Um, instead of illustrator, you could use artist. You could use illustrator, but um, I prefer to use artist. Um, so that's sort of your choice, catalogers choice on there. Um, you wanna um, code for the colorist and the letterer. Also, we also included a 700 for the um, Lev Grossman, who is the original author of The Magicians and we have the, um, oh, I can't think what the subfield I is actually termed right now, but um, anyway, you wanna put the graphic novelization of work on there. The relationship, that's what it is, the relationship note, sorry. Um, our next book is Pride and Prejudice. Um, this is a graphic novel that was adopted by Stacey King from the Jane Austen novel. This graphic novel um, is geared toward the young adult, adult audience, as you can see in the circled part here, it says about young adults. So just looking at this record, there's just a few different things. Um, in the fixed field, we do um, wanna include the audience as with D for young adult. And then we also want the coordinating six, the LC um, form heading 655, second indicator zero for young adult fiction. Uh, this book happens to be um, in a series called Magna, Maga, Maga Classics. So we do have a 490 and an 830. Um, in this record. I just want to mention that a lot of times graphic novels are not series, like um, usually the, the title, you would have the title, but you wouldn't also have the title in a series. Um, graphic, it's very unusual for graphic novels to actually be in a, be a series. Okay, our next book is uh, Library Wars, Love and Wars. Um, this is a graphic novel that originated in Japan in the anime format. These graphic novels were originally written as a light novel series. This type of graphic novel is often adapted from the original author's work and translated from Japanese to English. There are several volumes in this series um, and Library Wars is published by Viz as a part of the Shogun Beat, beat line. So looking at this record, um, the most important parts is we have an 041 for um, the fact that it, the text is in English and it, the original text was in Japanese or it was translated from Japanese. And then we have the core dating 546, um, which is the same principle, but written in sentence form. And you wanna always include both of these if you have, if you have an item that has translated from one language to another. Um, we also show that the 250 for the Shogun Beat edition um, that was on the that was on the book, and this, since this is a graphic novel that was originated in Japanese, they did it in the normal Japanese form. So it, we want to indicate that it's paged or that it's read um, right to left as opposed, yeah, right to left as opposed to left to right. Okay, the animated, an, animate, I can't say that word, <laughs> annotated Sandman is an interesting graphic novel since it was originally published in single magazine form. This graphic novel combines the Sandman magazine stories um, 57 through 75. And in this particular graphic novel, there were bibliographical references, um, which is a little unusual. Um, so that information needs to be recorded in the bibliographical re record. So just looking at this, um, this record, we do show in the fixed fields, in the, in the contents, we show not only the graphic novel six, but we also show the bibliographical references in there. And then we have the 504 that indicates includes bibliographical references. You also wanna include a note that says that it was originally published in single magazine form from Vertigo Jam One um, and the Sandman 5775. 
And um, I just wanted to indicate on this one, there wasn't an, um, an editor and a writer of introduction in this, which is a little unusual, but it just shows the correlation between graphic novels and um, books. So our last one that we're gonna look at um, is called Strange Planet. And Strange Planet is actually a comic strip in the form of a book. Each page tells its own story, often in four panels that are side by side, reading left to right. However, in Strange Planet, um, it has four panels, but they are in block form, which is which you read the upper left to the upper right, the lower left to the lower right. So what I want to uh, illustrate in this one is that this is not a graphic novel, but it is a comic it is comic, so you still code the fixed field with the with the number six in the contents. Um, you are still going to include the um, free floating subdivision as um, comic book strips and et cetera on all of your um, subject headings, and you will code it um, for the forms for the form headings. You will do um, comics graphic works because it is a comic, but you would not include the graphic novels because it is not a graphic novel. So that includes our presentation. Um, and these are the sources that we used in our research for this um, session. And here are the people from the CMC and, and Katie Powell, who is our intern. Um, so if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And I, I don't have any right now. Um, I did um, allow everybody to unmute themselves if you want to, if you're in a position where you can unmute yourself and ask a question. Um, or if you aren't in a place where you can unmute yourself and ask a question, you can uh, use the chat box. Or if you are shy and don't want to ask your question um, verbally, you can just use the chat box and ask questions there. Um, I had a question. Yes. I, it's been a while since I've uh, cataloged a graphic novel, but um, if the source reads as illustrated by so-and-so, why would you change, would, would you use the relator term that as indicated on the source or um, is it still cataloger's choice? Um, with relator terms, it, it would be cataloger's choice. I mean, they are the illustrator, but usually, um, Graphic novels are, are, I mean, I would say that they're artists that do it. So um, you can use either one. I mean, they're in that case, they're probably pretty interchangeable. I just prefer artists for graphic novels as opposed to illustrator, but I mean, they did illustrate it. So I think that would be your choice. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Bonnie. Sure. Um, Sherry, we've got a question from Shirley. Uh, can you elaborate on the difference between comics and graphic novels? So the comics um, kind of think of peanuts. I mean, I, I don't know if you, I mean, I don't know if anyone's getting peanuts books that are comics anymore. Um, but, you know, a long time ago, um, they would they would take all the peanuts comics and put them in a book form but they were really just individual strips that were on you know one stripped on this page one stripped on the next page so that is a quote unquote book of comics a graphic novel tells a story throughout the novel i mean it's more think of novel as opposed to just a little um a little short little four or five panel story um, so I don't know if that helps, but I don't think you're going to see that many comics anymore. Um, the one that we picked was the first one I've seen in a long time. Um, but I don't really catalog this kind of stuff either, but I, I, I hope that helps. I'm not, I, I'm not sure that it, I did. <laughs> I know they used to do like, um, you know a book form of like the far side you know they would just yeah yeah so I I don't know if they still do that because I don't catalog them anymore either but right um, right but those <laughs> would be those would be more a quote-unquote book of comics as opposed right. to a graphic, a graphic novel, novel. Yeah. yeah yeah um Janet wants to know if um they can get a copy of 
sorry. There were so many that came through. Uh, can we get a copy of the slides and use as a handout to refer back to later? Yes, the slides are on L2 right now, and then Sherry will be uploading the slides with the notes on L2 after the presentation. Um, give her a hot second afterwards to to get that because we have to convert it to pdf to load it on l2 yeah. Yeah, and i would um, say oh go ahead i'm sorry if you did copy if you did um take a copy of what i put on l2 i this morning i made some changes so because that's <laughs> so, what sherry and i do we can't stop ourselves yeah so um <laughs> basically once i posted the one today with the notes then throw that other one away <laughs> Okay. And Shirley said, thank you. She's the one that asked about the difference between comic books and graphic okay. novels. Okay. Um, Julia says, some comic strips have a series of continuing stories like Breaking Cat News. Is this a graphic novel or a comic? Well, if it's a comic strip, strip wouldn't it be a comic? I'm thinking it, if, it's still, if it's still like a comic strip that you would get in the newspaper, Right. Then I would say it's a comic. It's a book of comics. Um, I would not call that a graphic novel. I've never heard of Breaking Cat News, but if it, I mean, if it's especially if it's in um, a four panel form or, you know, straight across the page, as opposed to a graphic novel is kind of all over the page. Right. <clears throat> um, Bonnie asks, are the comics previously published? You mean the comics like that Strange Planet one? Or um, I don't I don't know. Katie Powell can maybe answer that question. But yeah, I would say like the, the Peanuts one, yeah, those were previously published in the newspaper. Like newspaper. In, in Book yeah. Farm, yeah. Um, right. Strange Planet was originally published like on um, that artist's uh, like instagram and oh. stuff so so i mean he, he released he released them later or earlier and then later they got compiled into a book okay and christy says garfield and calvin and hobbs are ones we had a lot of yep that's right mm -hmm. um so the only thing with garfield is a lot of the older ones have been released as like uh, I would call them a comic, but the use of Garfield as a graphic novel has um, kind of emerged in juvenile graphic novels. So I think you just kind of have to be careful with that one. Like not assume everything that Garfield is just a, a comic. It's just a comic. Okay. Um, Kelly says Big Nate is a comic series that we get a lot of. And Rhonda says, I would say Garfield is a comic and not a graphic novel since it is a collection of comic strips, question mark. Um, I think we just talked about that. Um, and then Julia says, I mean, the books, Breaking Cat News is put out in a book. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought she was yeah. saying. So it, it's just like the, the Strange Planet one or the, or the Peanuts ones and stuff. It's it appears to be a comic strip that was put out in a book. And I guess, I mean, I haven't read the comics and paper in so long, but I think that some of them, even in the paper, used to kind of continue a little bit. I can't really. Yeah, you know, they did. I can't remember. Yeah. That was yeah. the whole point, I think. Yeah, yeah, just have it like a continuation. Yeah. Okay. And then R. Allen asks, what sort of things would we put in a record? for an item that is a graphic novel or a comic strip compilation that was originally put on the internet, like a regular comic strip that was put on a website and then got popular enough to be given a publishing deal. Um, well, I think it may, so like you're, you're asking like about an, two things, right? Yeah, you're thinking, I'm thinking you're asking about like a note that I would, I mean, I would put a note in there that it was originally published on the internet, maybe. I don't, um, I think by what you're describing to me, it sounds like it's a comic strip still. It's just a comic strip that was put in book form. It's not a graphic novel. So I would catalog or it. Or if you're asking to the, both. Yeah, but I, I mean, 
I think pretty highly of notes when things are complicated yes. like this. Yep. So I would, I would include some notes that, it, you know, this originally, you know, sort of like the one that, um, that originated in, in magazine form on the Sandman one with, you know, from 57 to 75 or whatever it was, I'd put a note similar to that that kind of gave you some background on, on where this came from. Okay. So they're saying yes, both. So, yeah. um, so like if it is a graphic novel, but you're not really going to treat, it doesn't really matter the form it is, right. You're still going to, you're yeah, going to want to include as much information about you yeah. know, describing the item as much as you can in the bib record. Right. So you yeah, do would do notes for both of them. Right. Yes. I mean, yes. yeah. That, that would be my that would be my opinion but I'm also a fan of of notes that pertain to everyone not just your particular copy so yeah yeah not yeah so I think notes are good <laughs> me too um and then Bonnie asked could you include the website in the record um for Which the above thing she, oh, 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 the, oh yeah the scenario above yeah of course you could uh, you could yeah yep Okay, I'm going to put in the chat um, what our next online with the CMC is, and that's going to be October 21st, and I'm the one presenting and haven't even started yet, so <laughs> it's going to be fabulous. Um, I will start working on that um, soon. <laughs> um, it will be good. So um, does anybody else have any other questions? We still have some time. Um, like I said, I... I'm um, pretty sure I clicked the thing where you can unmute yourself and ask the question. Well, yes, because Bonnie asked. So, um, and um, was there anything else that we need to tell people? I don't think so. Okay. Just send in your items for CMC to be cataloged, local history, local authors, genealogy, special collections. Or language materials. Um, yes, we, we love helping. We do. Um, so our Alan has another question. What sort of category, so to speak, of field would that note go in discussing the place of origin or original medium? Oh boy. Well, a 500 note would be like the fact that it was on the internet. Um, I think you just have to look through the 500s and see if there's one that would specifically yeah. um, relate to that. Cause I, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head. I don't, I don't either because you're really, I mean, in that case, you're just letting them know that, that they can also find it there. So I don't know if mm -hmm. you wanted to put a link, I guess that would be in an 856. Um, yeah. Chrissy said she would just do a 500. And I think that's fine. Oh, there, yeah. might, there might actually be a specific note for that though yeah. too. And I don't know what it is. Yeah. Bib formats and standards is our friend. Yes, sure. I'm trying to run through the notes that I can think of off the top of my yeah. head that I, I can't come up with a, I mean, it's probably in that down there in the, like in the five, five, four or something, maybe. I don't think it's in yeah. the earlier, earlier notes, but <laughs> we need Jay Weiss to help us on this one. I know it. Okay. Um, nice to meet you too, Hanan. Um, is there, are there any other questions? I don't want to rush anybody off. And we do these um, typically the third Thursday of every month. Uh, we move the November one up a week uh, because that coincided with our um, share member day. So, but they're always 10 to 11 and we've got them scheduled through next April. So you can always find them in L2. Okay, um, well, Katie um, says, thanks Sherry and Katie. Um, Heidi says maybe a 534, a note that describes the original production of a work. Thanks, Heidi. Yeah, I'd have to read through that to make sure yep, that's what it would be, but yeah. Yep. 
Okay, where is it? I find the form to submit for CE credit for this training. Um, that would be on the SHARE website. Yeah, and she, she says and unhelpfully. Kate, you, don't, <laughs> yeah. you don't have to submit it if okay. um, you're here today in this session. Anyone who watches the recording will have to submit the form from the SHARE website. Yeah, and I'll mark attendance in L2, um, which is why I ask people to log in with their first and last name so I can yeah. figure out who you really are. Because <laughs> if you, you know, log in as libcat21, I, I don't know your first and last name. That's okay, Janet. That's fine. Oh, thanks, Rebecca. Oh. <laughs> it just makes my life easier if I know first and last names. But trust mm -hmm. me, I will not stalk you or... Um, try to come after you, I promise. Okay, um, I'm going to stop recording and I um, just want to thank everybody for attending and hopefully we'll see you um, next month.